What's up you guys? I'm Natasha. This is Shepherding Pepper's Farm, or at least the kitchen garden here on the farm. And if you're new to the channel, I'm really excited to have you. We try to do weekly garden tours here. We have a pretty massive kitchen garden. These are raised beds that are 24 feet long, four feet wide and three feet deep. We also have a perennial garden and about three acres in the back. We've got the whole sheep, ducks, chickens, pigs, the whole works. So we are growing pretty much all of our family's fruits and vegetables here on the farm. So on the channel, you're gonna see a lot of gardening, a lot of homesteading, a lot of preserving, a lot of life with a bunch of small kids in a small farm. So my husband is the farm architect. He builds all of our fencing, all of our barn structures, all of our raised beds. That is all him and I grow the garden. I grow the food. I start everything that you are gonna see in this garden from seed. I do not have anything in here that I have bought from a plant nursery. We're gonna cover a lot of that in the next seed starting season. But right now we're gonna take a look around and see what we have growing for fall. Now in this very first bed that you are seeing right here, we have a lot of brassicas. So these right here are Long Island improved Brussels sprouts. We have some flat leafed mizuna and we have lots of different cauliflowers and broccolis growing in through here. The majority of the broccoli is Waltham broccoli and the cauliflowers range and there are a wide variety of things. We have several different types of cauliflower growing in this garden. Green cauliflower, purple Sicily cauliflower, snowball cauliflower, there's another one I'm forgetting, but if I find a label, I'll let you know. Now you're gonna notice in this garden that I have broccoli and cauliflower plants that are quite a bit more mature than these little guys that you're seeing right here. That's because we succession sow our fall crops in the garden, so that way we get a continual harvest and it's not everything all at once. That way we can use it fresh, but we can also store what we need to as extra. So in these beds, you're gonna see some that are very much farther along and you're gonna see some that are little tiny tykes like this. And I also have some that are just about ready now to go in the ground. Now, right here, this is the loofah trellis. These loofahs that you're seeing, these are ready to be shucked and cleaned and seeded and made into sponges. So we're gonna harvest these. We are gonna do a video on that. All right, loofahs. Loofahs are an edible gourd. They also are more commonly known to be sponges. We do not use regular sponges in our kitchen. We have loofahs that we use to wash our dishes and we use them in the shower and they have a bunch of other purposes, scrubbing the countertops, things of that nature. So what we're gonna be doing in the next week or two is we are going to go through a video where I'm going to show you how to shuck these, clean these, wash them, dry them so you can store them or use them in your house, how to save the seeds from these, and then we're gonna make soap. We are going to make homemade soap together Put it with the loofahs and we're gonna make some Christmas gifts to give out to people. And we're gonna have some really awesome smelling soap to use on the farm too. So I hope you guys tune in for that. When you're harvesting your loofahs, ideally you wanna harvest them when they're this dark brown color. You can hear the seeds are rattling around. This is completely dried out. This is about where they're at when they start that process. That brown will continue all the way up. You could still harvest this if necessary. It's just gonna be a little bit more work to shuck and clean. And the truth is you can even harvest these green ones and do the same thing. It's just much more time consuming and the sponges are gonna be smaller, so. All right, let's take a look at the peppers on the back side of this bed because it was only two garden tours ago that we stripped our pepper plants completely bare. And I mean completely bare. So that way I could demonstrate to you guys why picking your peppers frequently throughout the growing season is not just a great idea because you will increase your harvest, but it's also beneficial because your plants will then start producing you new peppers that are larger. And in turn, you're gonna end up with much more fruit. You can see there's one, two, three peppers right there. Look at this beauty. That's gorgeous. I talk about peppers a lot on the channel. You could have probably guess that from the name, Shepherding Peppers. Peppers are my favorite. Some people love tomatoes. They, they wanna grow all the varieties of tomatoes. I'm a pepper girl. I wanna grow all the hot peppers and I wanna grow all the not hot peppers. I love peppers. I can eat them. I can eat a ridiculous amount of peppers. <laughs> I have a lot of pepper recipes that I use. I, Peppers are awesome. And because of that, a lot of my knowledge base and focus stemmed from the love of peppers. 
So I talk a lot on the channel about the fact that if you want to grow peppers in one growing season, there are certain things that you can do to your pepper plants that will help you get the best harvest that you can. Things that you can keep in mind for next growing season, because most of us here, especially if you're in the United States, are wrapping up our growing season and we're kind of done. We do garden throughout the fall and winter. We don't grow peppers though. Peppers, although they're perennial, if they are grown in areas that do not get a frost, they don't even really like temperatures in the 40s to low 50s, which is what we're having at night right now. We've had our first couple of nights in the 40 degrees and they haven't loved that, but they're still doing okay. When we get a little bit closer to our first frost, we're gonna go ahead and dig some of these peppers up and overwinter them in the garage, which we will also do a video on and we will talk about why we're doing that, how we're gonna go about it, and you'll get to see the results over the winter and next spring when we plant them. But the longer peppers are in the ground, the bigger and more productive your pepper plants are going to be overall. So in areas that do not get a frost, your pepper plants get massive, they get huge. We're gonna try and work that to our advantage this next growing season by overwintering a few of these. Because how great would it be to get monster bell peppers like this from the beginning of the season? It's really hard to leave these and let them turn red, but red peppers are so good. So these peppers right here, these are California Wonder Bells all throughout here. These look really, really good. And then as we work our way down, we have some sheep nose peppers in through here. And then this is the Ash County Pimento Pepper section. These are the peppers that are used to make pimento cheese and actually sheep nose peppers. These little tykes down here are also often used in pimento cheese. They don't have the name, but they're used. And the Ash County pimento peppers have been a wonderfully productive bell pepper this growing season, which has been awesome. These guys have produced like champions. They've been absolutely wonderful. This right here is a radisho. It grew in the garden last winter. I left it and ignored it this spring and it just continued to plug along over there. Now, if we continue down this way, so working in a straight line from bed to bed, this is a whole section of different broccoli and cauliflower plants. I did take the row covers off of here. As you guys know, I've had row covers on everything. These right here are green cauliflowers. This right here is Waltham broccoli. And as you can see, these plants are quite a bit bigger than the little guys that we have right up there. Now I took the row cover off of, oh, we also have some carrots that have been free seeded in this bed as well. You can see them all in throughout here. I took the row covers off of these guys behind me for a couple different reasons. One, I think it's about time to give them a little bit of liquid fertilizer. I'm gonna go ahead and put down some fish fertilizer on these in the next day or two. The second reason is because since these plants are quite a bit bigger, I'm gonna put my row covers on the plants that are much smaller. I did a whole half a bed yesterday. I'm gonna to wanna to get those covered because until I get that first frost, these plants are gonna be ransacked by bugs. It's just the way it's gonna be living in the south and growing here. So I would like to keep the plants that are the smallest and most susceptible to dying due to heavy pest pressure covered. When they get a little bit bigger and matured, I can take that off of them and they'll be okay. Um, I don't have enough row covers for all the beds. It just is what it is. So you work with what you have. Now over here in this bed, this is Waltham 29 butternut squash right here. And we're gonna harvest a few of these. This guy could have actually cured just a little bit longer on the vine, but we are starting to get teeny tiny little caterpillars on here and they will bore their way into my squash and ruin it. And the butternut squash is my favorite. And because it's my favorite, I'm not willing to let the caterpillars get it. So the beautiful thing about squash, once it's started to blush like this, you can go ahead and harvest it. You can put it in your pantry and it will ripen over the course of, it depends on how, depends on what color it is when you harvest it. So spaghetti squash, for example, if you harvest it when it is not at all yellow, it can take several months for it to ripen. But it, like this guy right here, has already started blushing. It's very, very close. So I would say in a week or two, this will probably be ready to be harvested. But you can harvest your squash if you have a frost coming. And for the most part, it'll ripen in the house. It just takes a while. Squash does not appreciate colder temperatures. So it's gonna be much slower to ripen during this time anyways. I had to pull weed. Oh, see, there's a big caterpillar I just knocked off of there. Here's a really good example. 
Can you see this caterpillar right here? That guy? Hey, peanut butter. Come here. But yeah, those caterpillars, like the one that you just saw, will absolutely go after my butternut. So I'm even going to harvest this one because I'm starting to get a little nervous. And this is a smaller one, but that's okay. I'm going to check this little guy over here too. Yeah. See, this one already actually has a little bit of damage. Right there. Now, technically, we're supposed to have, I don't know, another four weeks before our first frost. I don't know if I will get any more squash off of this plant. I haven't seen any other baby squashes yet and squash doesn't like cold temperatures so we'll just have to see besides that one butternut squash this bed is pretty bare all uh, all that it has in here really besides that are sweet potatoes these are going to come out this week more than likely because of the fact that all the other sweet potatoes have been taken out of the garden several beds up in the front were emptied this week so now right here these are the giant indian snake beans producing wonderfully. We're gonna harvest the majority of these. We're gonna get our wheelbarrow out and do that in a second. Now over here, these are your Japanese winged beans. These have been a super fun and interesting variety to grow just because they're very unique. I like to try new things. I like to grow new things. I think it's part of the fun being able to grow something that you can't get in the grocery stores. I think that's a wonderful and interesting thing to be able to do. Wing beans haven't been my favorite. They haven't been the kid's favorite. It, uh, I'm not sure it's for us. It's a really fun and niche thing to go ahead and grow, but I'm not really sure I'm going to grow it again next year. However, we'll have to see what spring holds. Didn't love it this year. I try to give things more than one opportunity if I didn't love something, so that way I'm not just cutting it off right away. We'll have to see. All right, but behind me right here, these right here are probably one of my favorite things that I've grown in the garden this year. This is kakuzi squash. We had a massive kakuzi harvest in the last garden tour. It was wonderful. The kakuzi has not only been super prolific, it's held its own against the vine borers. It has continued producing all summer long. It has grown me so much food that I'm going to be able to store in my pantry, that I'm going to be able to use as a zucchini and squash substitute in my kitchen. I actually have like 30 pounds of kakuzi on the counter that I have to deal with. And then we'll add whatever we harvest today to that. But this has just been wonderful. I cannot recommend kakuzi squash in flavor and production enough. This will always, always be grown in my garden, always. Plus, it makes a really beautiful arch trellis. thing you have to be mindful of is the spider webs. I don't know if you guys can see them. They get produced all through these areas, right in through here. Also, this, okay, this, by the way, is also a kakuzi flower. How gorgeous is that? Also, one more thing on the kakuzi. If you were with us when Seth helped me in the garden for one of the garden tours, he doesn't do it all the time because he actually is not super personable like that unless he's in the right mood. Um, and when he is, it's wonderful because he's just the greatest, but I had a giant like six foot kakuzi squash that I was saving for seed and he snipped it in excitement and brought it in the house. So we have been saving this guy right here for seeds as a replacement, but I do think that the kakuzi that we harvested is going to have viable seeds. It's been completely cleared of its seeds. It's in the dehydrator and I think it'll work really nicely. I'm gonna do a germination test in the house just to make sure, but I think it should be productive. Now in this bed right here, this is one of the beds that's going to keep its row cover. This is a bunch of different cabbages. So right in through here, we have some Sappers Giant cabbages. We have some Golden Acre cabbages. We have some early Jersey cabbages right in the back over there. And then you can see somehow the pests are still getting underneath these. And I think the soil isn't really holding enough moisture because some of these guys are still really, really puny. That or they're having a lot of ant pressure. It's gotta be one of the two. So we're definitely gonna give these cabbages some good fertilizer. I think they really need that. These right here are carrots that are going to flower. These are the giant carrots that I showed you guys earlier this year. I've been really wanting these to go to flower because of the fact that I want more seeds to grow those. These are swallowtail butterfly caterpillars. These are the state butterfly of South Carolina and these guys have free range in my garden. 
Swallowtail butterflies really enjoy parsley and dill. If you don't have those available, carrots are a really good third option. So you can grow those if you want to, to entice those butterflies to come join your garden. Or if you're growing them and you start to see those, those caterpillars on there, just leave them. It's gonna be okay. Share your bounty. So if we continue forward, this bed doesn't have a lot going on. It still has some melon vines that I need to take out and then plant with, but you can see there are a lot of free seeded carrots in here that have started to come up. All of these guys right here, carrots everywhere. Now over on this side though, the majority of these are Walton broccolis. This right here, this lettuce that you're seeing grow, this is Paris Island lettuce that's starting to come up in through here. This was also free seeded. What I mean when I say free seeded is I took a handful of seeds or a dried plant that had seed pods on it and just threw it into the bed. I do not recommend this method if you don't have an abundance of seeds. However, I try to save a lot of seeds every year and one carrot that goes to flower can produce you a extraordinary number of carrot seeds. So I had a lot this year, so I felt really comfortable free seeding with the lettuce and free seeding with the carrots. I do have certain varieties of cabbage, of carrots, up in the front bed over there that have been started in seed trays, but lettuce is really easy to grow. If you're a beginner gardener, lettuce is one that you can grow and you can feel really, really good about because it's really easy to grow. You can grow it in the house if you want to. And it's, it's just very forgiving. It's a wonderful plant to grow, so. I'm also not worried about how close the lettuce is to the rest of these plants because lettuce roots are very shallow, first four inches or so, and cauliflower and broccoli roots go pretty deep into the soil, about a foot to a foot and a half. So they are really good companion plants in that way. And you can see these are much bigger. These are really nice and big in size in through here. We do have some peas that have been planted on these trellises right in through here. And these are Cosmos. Once again, because of the wind, some of the Cosmos got knocked down. I'm probably gonna snip this and bring this inside and put it in a vase just for some beautiful color. Cosmos are incredibly easy to save seeds for. I can show you that really quickly. Those Cosmos are great at reseeding all on their own, but I'm gonna show you how to do it if you want to. One of the simplest ways is to look for your dried flower heads and snip these off. Grab out a Ziploc bag, put these in here, and just shake your bag. All these seeds, right in through there, those are your Cosmo seeds. And then once they're all shaken out, all you have to do is remove your seed head and throw it out. And if these are completely dry, you shouldn't get any mold or mildew in the bag. If you feel more comfortable, you can harvest the heads and put them on a paper plate or a regular plate in your house to dry. Once they're completely dry, rub them with your fingers and all these seeds will come out and then you will have pink Cosmos or whatever color Cosmo you will have in your garden for next season. This is pretty much just sweet peppers. These are Choji Sherdo peppers. Seth teased me about pronouncing these a little bit earlier and I finally, finally got it in my brain how you say these. This is a Basque word. Um, the spelling is completely different. It's spelled with a T and an X, so kind of hard to remember. Here's a red one back here. At the base of the peppers, we have radishes that are coming up. These right here are the Pippin's Golden Honey Peppers. And over here we have, these are Lesia Sweet Peppers. This plant is getting really top heavy. Down here we have some more Italian pepperoncinis. These have not stopped growing all season long. I have put up so many cans of pepperoncinis, it's wild. So I actually need to harvest a good bunch of these today. These need to be harvested before they start to change color because this is about the length and the color you're gonna wanna harvest these at, so. These are the hot wax peppers right here that should not have been here, but have done really well. Like beautiful, I'll probably harvest some of those too. We'll see. And then down here we have more Lesia sweet peppers. A lot of these could be harvested, but I'm trying to let them turn red because Lesia sweet peppers are one of the sweetest peppers in the world when they turn red. Thank you, sweet pea. Yes, you may. Down in through here, these guys right here, these are chocolate beauty bell peppers. 
If you leave them long enough, they will turn a chocolatey color as they ripen. Over here, we have our onion starts and some pansies that have been started in our seed tray. And come around to the side really quickly. Lots and lots of chocolate beauty bell peppers in through here. And then these are your California Wonder Bells down here. And again, remember, we stripped these plants bare two weeks ago. These right here are Mexican sunflowers being enjoyed by the pollinators. These get really tall. Mexican sunflowers on their own can get five to six feet tall. And then they also have a couple of extra feet from this raised garden bed. These are beautiful flowers. I put these in here on a whim. I wasn't expecting to love these as much as I did. I love multi-headed sunflower plants. I find them to be exceptionally beautiful. I want to plant these all over the farm next year. I think they'd be really pretty in the front of the house. They're beautiful. So that's what these are. If we move over from this bed to this one, you'll see right in through here, we have pretty much the same setup. We have our lettuce that has been sprinkled in with our mostly broccoli. This lettuce right in through here though is a Marvel of Four Seasons butter bib lettuce that is coming up. Over in through here we have some blue light pole beans that are mixed in with our cucamelons right here. Cucumelons are fantastic, really good little snacking cucumbers. They take a really long time to produce and get going though. Cucumelons can be a little bit fussy. They have not loved this particular spot in the garden or the temperatures that we've been having, which, which are slightly different than last year's, quite as much as they did the previous fall. Last fall, these produced like a champion. This fall, they are very slow to get going. They're still very slow. So we're just gonna have to see if these do very much before the frost, and if they don't, I'm gonna put them back in the original spot that I had them in the garden next year, which was up in the front on a flat panel. Right here, these are Craig's Grande Jalapenos. If you notice this purple blushing color on your peppers, it means they're trying to ripen. These will ripen to a beautiful red color when they are smoked. Red jalapenos that are smoked are known as chili peppers. They're really, really good. I have been leaving these on here and just harvesting them as I need them at this point. Now, before the first frost comes, we will harvest absolutely everything in this garden and have a massive food preservation I don't know, a week or two, because I will not waste anything that is in here. But at the moment, I am letting as many of the peppers ripen as I possibly can, because ripe peppers are absolutely delicious. The riper a pepper is, whether it ripens to a chocolate brown color, because it is a chocolate beauty bell pepper, or whether it ripens to a traditional red color, they are sweeter when they are ripe. They're also hotter if they're hot peppers when they're ripe. I believe these ones are big gym peppers, right in through here. And then we have some rainforest chili peppers. These are funny little firecrackers. These will ripen to a red and are about as hot as a cayenne. Now down on this side, this is Seth's favorite pepper right here. It's a Buena Mulata hot pepper. These beautiful purple peppers are essentially purple cayennes. They're about as hot as a cayenne pepper and they're just really gorgeous to look at. Again, more rainforest chili peppers and through here. The rest of these are pretty much just jalapenos that I'm letting ripen so I can decipher what variety they are. Because I planted several different types of jalapenos in the garden and my labels got all mixed up, these could be orange spice jalapenos, these could be lemon spice jalapenos, they could be Zapotec jalapenos. I really won't know until they ripen to the color that they're supposed to be. So I'm trying to leave these be but what I will say is they have been hugely productive little guys. Really, really great this year. This little batch right here is a late going batch of the Sugar Rush Peach Peppers. We have a huge bushel of peppers that are almost ripe all down in through there. I'm gonna show you in just a second. This is what I believe is my Aros Campolo pepper. I'm really excited about this. I really hope it ripens in time. It's my first year growing Aros Campolo peppers, so I'm not overly familiar with the process. Um, but if they're anything like the other peppers, as they should be, should get a few ripe peppers before the season is wrapping up completely. Down in through here, we got lots of poblanos. These are really starting to wake up and become something which is exciting i mean look how big this cayenne pepper is that sucker is huge for a cayenne really really great i think it's because this bed was amended with compost before i put the peppers in now this right here is a till pepper plant 
these don't get overly big, but this is about as hot as a habanero. This plant is massive, really nice. These are your red habaneros. Over here, these are my sugarish peach preppers. These plants are so loaded down. So these plants are just super heavy laden with fruit. They are just showing off at this point and producing wonderfully. These will ripen to a really beautiful peach color. These are pretty hot in and of themselves, but the more ripe they get, the more their peach flavor really shines. So they make a absolutely wonderful hot sauce. I'm trying to be well behaved this year and leave them to a fully riped state. Very hard though. I mean, what if we just took one? This one came right off, so it's not my fault. These are about as hot as a cayenne to a very low grade habanero, typically between 50,000 to 100,000 school bills. Peach flavor's so good though. When they're not ripe, they're really not that hot. Now let's eat cocoa. I keep waiting for the punishment. Oh my gosh though. That peach flavor is so good. There it is. Hello. So, a couple bites in. I'm not gonna need this sweater. It's gonna be really hot. They're so good though. I know it's a dangerous game, but it's so good. Plus, there is a really big benefit to eating hot peppers. I know that that can be kind of intimidating for some people who aren't spicy pepper people, but hot peppers can actually increase the blood flow throughout your circulatory system which is really, really good for your heart. It's really good for your nerves. It's really good if you get really cold hands and feet. So if you can stomach the heat, it's hot sauce and hot peppers and cayenne water. It's all really good for you. We regularly drink cayenne water in our house to help with inflammation. My husband and I, not my babies, although I have some wild children who love hot sauce. And I mean hot sauce, they're crazy. They get it from their mother, it's okay. Um, although Seth is a pretty hot sauce guy too. He wasn't when we first got married. That was my influence. And now sometimes he outdoes me on the hot pepper scale. So regardless, now that I've gotten off on a tangent, these peppers, they are my favorite hot pepper. Now I am gonna grow a whole bunch of new varieties of peppers next year. I found a new seed company that offers a lot of different hot peppers. And of course, for me, it's like being in a candy store as a kid. I have to grow them all. I'm trying to show some restraint, but Gosh darn, those are good. We have the big gems growing, doing really well, really well. And then mostly all of these in through here are serrano peppers. These are loaded with fruit, completely loaded down. These right here are Fresno chili peppers. And then we have a little section of poblanos that is growing over here. It's a little top heavy and just falling over and I'm gonna let it be that way. Now over here, this bed had a ton of sweet potatoes in it. I came through and harvested the bulk of these. You can see a lot of my winter stuff up there is ready to go in. A lot of these are Brussels sprouts. Long Island Improved Brussels sprouts is the variety of Brussels sprout that I am trying out this year. Because in spite of my gardening success and my many years as being a horticulturalist, I can honestly tell you that Brussels sprouts and I haven't really gotten along. We haven't. It's Brussels sprouts have been very, very tough for me. They, I mean, we are growing in a very hot, humid environment and Brussels sprouts don't really love that. For me, as soon as I start to get some good solid Brussels sprouts and I think, okay, this is the year, I can do it. They immediately seem to go to flower. We get one really hot day and they're like, here I am, I'm a flower now. And then you can't eat them because they're not Brussels sprouts anymore, they've gone to flower. So hopefully this year with the colder temperatures that we've been having, I will be able to get some Brussels sprouts. Fingers crossed. All right guys, for me, that's gonna wrap up the actual tour portion of this video. I always have to do kind of half of it in one garden tour and the other half in the other because, I mean, the garden's pretty massive. I'm gonna go change. When I first came out here, it was like 55 degrees and really windy. I'm gonna put on a t-shirt so I can actually harvest this garden. All right, I typically do my harvesting after I shoot the garden tour portion of things and I heat it up. So that's where the outfit change comes into play. You know, you can't wear a winter sweater when it finally heats up to be 65 degrees. You're gonna melt.
So we're growing wild out here in our back pasture. These are beauty berries right here, and I'm gonna harvest these, and we're gonna make jam with these. But I'm gonna do this by harvesting probably the whole stickle, the whole bush, because the pigs are annoying me, mostly. So we're gonna harvest these. This grows back year after year. This is a perennial. And it is just growing wild back here on the property, which is pretty cool. So just like this, I harvest these, and I'm gonna take this inside, and I'll deal with them back there, mostly because the pigs are just driving me crazy. I'm super pushy right now. 